Hi, I'm Rick of Rick's Taxidermy and Native Works here with Advanced Tanning Solutions. Today I'm going to show you guys how to use this multi-step fur dressing kit on these little squirrels here. What we got here is a couple of rascally little guys. We got the uh, alpine pine squirrel and then we have a regular pine squirrel. Uh, both harvested here in Colorado. Ready to go for uh, doing some flat tanning. This is a, a great little kit for your first time tan. Your kid goes out and gets a squirrel or a little rabbit, wants to home tan it, this would be a, a good little kit for you to do. So the uh, skinning process has already been done. The fleshing process is, is yet to be done. You can do the same fleshing process for pretty much any of your fur bearers, rabbits, any little small critters. It all works out pretty good. Similar anatomies, especially in your rodents. These little guys here have a little bit of flesh and they still got their glands. And that's all we're gonna take off so that way we can keep a soft and supple tan. We're gonna wanna try to get rid of as much of the membrane and flesh as we possibly can. We're not gonna need to do uh, any face turning because these are just gonna be little flat hides. Let's go ahead and get into it. This is one of the little fleshing tools that come in the kit. So we're gonna try to get in and get all these little pieces of flesh and fat and greasy glands out and away from the hide. These squirrels have already had their tails taken out. So we're gonna come in and just kind of scrape and peel and pull away these little chunks of fat. Uh, fleshing works always the best when you go with the grain of the hair. So go from the face to the tail. Now the type of fleshing that I'm doing here is uh, called table fleshing. You'll notice on this tool it has a rounded edge. This is for pipe fleshing. You take a little pipe and you put it down, pull your skin tight over that and flesh that way. These guys aren't gonna be too terribly fleshy, so we're not really gonna need to do that, but I'd recommend that for beavers and raccoons, possums, things that have a little bit more grease and, and flesh on them. And just scrape it down, scrape it back. Uh, it's very important when you're uh, working hides to act as if you're going to eat it. You don't want it to rot, you don't want it to spoil, even though we all know you're not going to eat your hide. Just treat it as if you were going to put it on your dinner table. That's coming off nice and clean. You'll know when you're coming pretty clean, you'll see that there's this bluing on the hide. Where the hide is blue, you don't need to worry about too much fleshing. That means that there's nothing there. But when you can see these darker areas or lighter colored areas, that's where the flesh and the fat is. That's what you need to get off. And remember, be patient. You try to run through this, you're gonna end up ripping it and cutting big holes. major area is you got to come down here and get these little sacks. Most of your fur bearers have them. They're called a musk gland and it's oily and greasy and it's not going to give you a very good tan once if you leave it on there. Once it's off you can get a better tan It's looking pretty good. We looks like we got all the flesh. We got the glands. We still got a little bit of the membrane, you know, in little places. Just kind of work it off. In some of the tighter areas, you can go ahead and use any of these uh, pointed areas. Each one will be good for a different area. You just kind of have to play with it and figure out where 
one sharp point would go better than another one. All right, that guy looks like he's pretty much done. Let's move over here to squirrel number two here. The blade actually makes pretty, uh, pretty short work of this. It's looking pretty good down here. We're almost finished. That looks pretty good. Now these little guys are uh, fleshed and ready to be salted. All right, now we're back for the uh, salting process. This process is it's going to take out all the oils and non-tannable proteins and the greases out of the hide, uh, dehydrate it and lock in the uh, fur into the, the skin. So that way you don't get hair slip, or in this case would be fur slip, and you don't end up with a little bald squirrel. So all we're gonna do is just flip open their faces for the flat tan. And just gonna drizzle a little bit of salt just so we can work it into the edges. Get a generous amount in the lip area. Make sure you pack it in underneath the lips and then fold the face and jaw lips over and into the salt. And just to hold them down, a little bit of weight of the salt does just fine. And then to make sure that we get into the tail, Split the tail all the way over. And then apply your salt. Filling your little crease. And then we're gonna wanna take and pinch this together just to keep all of the salt in. So we're gonna pinch and flip. Curl his little tail across him. And then I always like to add a little bit of salt on the outside just to make sure that the whole tail gets nice and dry. All right, now on to the next one here. Essentially, it's the same process. Put a nice healthy line down the center and spread to the edges. Unrolling and unfolding every little hidden edge, making sure that every bit, every bit gets salted. And I know what you're saying, how do you know how much salt to put? You can never put too much salt. Just like the last one, fill up his little face, and then fold and add some more salt to hold it down. Open up your tail slit and apply salt in there as well. Pack it down, pinch. Let's add some more salt out here. And then get your last layer. Now let these dry for up to about 12 hours or so. We'll see you in about 12 hours. And we're back after uh, salting our squirrels. Our salt mixture is water, salt, bleach, and then we have this degreaser. It comes in the kit. Uh, this is just a uh, degreaser and detergent. Uh, remember that the furred animals, they have more grease and more fat. And remember those glands that we got rid of? Those are musk glands and musk, all musk is, is it's like a grease. It's, it's an oily grease. They use that for mating and keeping themselves clean, I guess you can say, and bug free. So it's part of their grooming. So that's why we have the degreaser in it. So all we're gonna do here is just knock off the salt and you're gonna see that they're nice and dry. These can go ahead and get rehydrated. 
go ahead and shake them and knock them off. Get rid of any excess salt. Once you can hear it hitting my paper here. And we're just going to take them and kind of dunk them. Kind of like Santa and his cookies. Just to get them rehydrated, you can see that they're kind of bending and free floating. I'm just going to rehydrate for a minute. When it starts to bend, then you can go ahead and just let it sink. Don't grab it and pull it. You're going to yank out the hair or the furs. Always just take it and kind of crush it, and it should come free. If it doesn't, you can kind of twist it between your fingers and loosen up and fall off. One thing I kind of wanted to go over was that degreaser. Like I said, it's going to help clean them so you get nice soft fluffy fur instead of uh, some of the other kits that are out there that the fur's not really so fluffy but you mean it's fur is what they say so ours is gonna just make it nice and fluffy for you strip away anything that's gonna weigh down those little furs and the same thing just kinda dunk them We're going to let these soak until soft and supple. It's going to take a couple hours. All right, and we're back. It's been about uh, three hours on our rehydrating. The squirrels are looking nice and soft and supple. As you can see, you can see the kind of different layers here. That's because of the degreasing and the uh, detergent. It's pulling everything down and away from your nice little hides here. Remember, with fur bearing or, or fur dressing with any of the furred animals, you want to continuously degrease the entire process. The reason for that is, again, you want nice and fluffy fur, especially something that you've taken this much time to prepare. So we're gonna, what we're going to do here is take these and hang them here and drip dry them for about 10-15 minutes. And then we're going to take them from there and put them into our pickle. And that'll get the process going for making them soft and supple so we can scrape them and thin them down and, you know, throughout the whole process. So let, let's go ahead and get to doing that. Pull them out and let them drain just a little bit before you try to transfer so you don't make a big old mess everywhere. And what you can do is give them just a little squeeze here. Try to get out any of the excess. It'll help speed up your drip drying and make a little bit less of a mess. I always hang mine first side up just to make sure that it's not gonna sit there and try to dry out my hide. That and all the fur obviously is first side out. So get these spaced here. Wow, look at that degreaser working and that detergent. Be gentle if you're going to do this. Don't squeeze it too terribly hard or even pull down. Don't run your hand down it like uh, you would a rag because they're very delicate. Especially right now. Get them opened up here. And just kind of stretch them out just a little bit. And remember, their fur is their raincoat. So you want as much fur hanging down as possible. You could even use just a little wire. I've seen some people just pick this up and uh, put a screw on either side and do it that way. I like doing it this way because it keeps it nice and contained and I don't have a big mess to clean up. So we'll see you in about 10-15 uh, minutes roughly. All right, some time has passed, about 10, 15 minutes. They're done drip drying. This is the pickle tan. When you're mixing it, I would highly recommend that you use the dust mask. It's very fine and powdery, and it kind of just lingers in the air. So remember, safety first. So all this pickle bath is, is just the pickle, and a little bit of salt, and some more degreaser. The rule in the industry is, treat every fur bearer 
as the greasiest. So always treat them like a beaver or a raccoon. Those are going to be the greasier animals. And that's why we're going to continue using this throughout the process. Keep make sure that they're degreased. Again, you don't want anything on these tiny little itty bitty fur hairs. So we're going to go ahead and gently put these into the pickle. And there you go. Push him down, make sure he doesn't have any air in him. Leave these in there for 12 to 24 hours. Obviously the time depends on the thickness of the hide, how big the hide is. All right, and we're back. We have our squirrels here in the pickle. They've been sitting for about 12 to 24 hours roughly. So all we're gonna do right now is just take them out of the pickle and then put them and hang them for draining. Do not get rid of your pickle. This pickle, the really cool thing about it is by raising the pH on it, it now turns into the tan. These are looking pretty good. We're gonna need to do a little bit of shaving on them, but we'll do that after they're done drip drying. You don't want the skin to be too wet. You're not gonna be able to really peel or shave anything. It'll, it's kind of like a lubricant. Your blade just gonna glide across and you're not gonna be able to really grab a hold of it. You'll notice on your little squirrels how they're kind of blue. That's because they have a really thin skin and you're seeing the hairline. And you'll notice also that you'll see, still see some little fleshy bits and little fleshy parts. And that's what we're gonna be kind of shaving off to thin it down just a little bit to accept the tannid. So we're gonna let these sit for about 30 minutes and uh, then we'll be back and flip them over and let them sit for about another 10 minutes. And we're back. We uh, pulled them out and drained them. It's been roughly about a half hour or so. Uh, they're looking pretty good. They're not dripping anymore. They're actually starting to kind of dry out and get fluffy again. It's kind of what you want. So what we're gonna do is, move this guy over here. Go ahead and flush these just a little bit. So you have the pumice stone and the scraping tool. You're gonna have to just kind of play with them and see which one works better. I think I'm gonna start off with the pumice stone and just try to get off some more of these little fleshy bits and just get that membrane kind of broken up so that way it can accept the tan. And once you get an area started, you can just kind of grab it and peel that layer. Remember, be gentle. They don't have a whole thick hide like a raccoon does. And once you get a hold of some areas, like I said, just peel it back. Peel it nice and slow. Don't try to yank it. Don't try to sit there and work it back and forth. Just grab it and kind of pull if it stops. Work in another area and try to get as much of the big peeling as you possibly can done. And remember, just work at it and be patient. It doesn't take very long, but it seems like it's gonna take forever. See, once you, the more you work at it, the bigger the pieces you're gonna get. And that's kind of what you want. And just to reiterate, getting this is gonna, all this off is gonna help the tan go through and penetrate all the fibers of the hide. 
And it's going to make it nice and soft and supple and pliable. And it's also going to help on your consistency of color for the tan. If you don't get it off, you'll notice that there's going to be slightly darker areas, slightly lighter areas. And remember with this process, we're just going down the entire length of it and going with the grain of the hair, not against it. We don't want to mess up those little hair follicle fibers. And we don't want to press too hard because we don't want to be tearing holes. And what will help is if you can kind of stretch out your edges, stretch out your hide. And always try to work towards some type of edge, whether it be the side edge or the down edge towards the rump of the animal. In certain areas, you're going to go sideways. Certain areas, you're going to go down. Like on the legs, I'm going sideways. And then on the body, I'm going down. Because we're trying to follow the hair patterns. Because that's going to determine the best place for the hide to come, well, the peeling to go without causing snags and hang ups. or ripping and tearing. And we notice an area that kind of wants to fold over on itself, that's where you would grab it and stretch it out and peel it away from whatever area is trying to fold over on itself. You don't want to give yourself pressure cuts or pressure holes. Like I said earlier, the more you work at it, the bigger pieces you're going to get off, the faster you will be done. This one's looking pretty close to being done. Just need to work on the face. And by the ears. What will also help, especially on the face, is being able to stretch it and pull it and put your finger under and pinch it like that. And it'll help you get into those little areas. Basically, you're using your finger as like a little miniature fleshing beam. And just continue peeling and thinning. Don't thin it too much. It's more like a shaving, but you are going down a couple steps in the hide layers. Think about uh, hide as blankets. There are several little blankets on top of each other. I'm going to put this one aside because I'm going to say this one's pretty close to being done, or if not, just done. And I'm gonna go ahead and work on this one. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. And we're back. So this is the existing pickle bath. This is the reason why we kept it, because we're going to raise the pH to turn it into the tan with the baking soda. Now you'll notice it's going to be fizzing. This is one of the reasons why we're leaving the, tan, the hides out. Now that the bubbles have subsided for the most part, we'll go ahead and slowly introduce these to the mixture. Nice and slow. We're 
We're gonna let these sit in the mixture for about four hours. Longer if necessary on bigger animals. Kinda of reminds you of science class, doesn't it? And we don't need to test the pH on this because they're already pre-adjusted for you based on the amount that you're using, the mixture that you're using. Go ahead and push them. Work out any air bubbles, if there is any. And we'll go ahead and let those sit. We'll be back in about roughly four hours or so. It's been about four hours or so, so we're gonna go ahead and take these out and get them ready for the draining and oiling process. So we're just gonna go ahead and put on our gloves and just like we did before, and then drain them over the stick and in the uh, bucket. And we're gonna leave these guys for about a half hour to drain and dry, and then we'll come back and start oiling. Go ahead and pull them out and squeeze them off just a little bit. Remember, be gentle. Unfold the little tails. This is like a light squeegeeing. Don't squeeze it and go down. Just kind of squeeze and down, squeeze and down. As you can see that I'm doing here. And then we're gonna pick them up and gently drape them over our stick. Make sure that everything's unfolded. Remember to leave plenty of room for the other one. You want some air to go between them. It just helps speed up the process a little bit. And remember to lay them out as flat as you can. Try not to have buckles or wrinkles. It'll just help them go a little faster. So we're gonna let these go ahead and sit and we'll get all this all cleaned up and we'll get ready to oil them. See you in just a few. And we're back, it's been about a half hour or so. What we're gonna do is take these guys off and lay them down and let them uh, get ready to oil. We're gonna oil with the oil that comes in the uh, kit. Just kinda open up, make sure that the tail can accept some oil too. As you remember, we didn't skin all the way down the tail. That's optional. The th hair and the skin is so thin that you're not really gonna have to do that on the tail. But this part of the tail is a little thicker, so that's why we're gonna oil on this part here. All righty. We're gonna use the fur oil that comes in your kit. And all we're gonna do is work in little bits at a time. You don't wanna to go too heavy and you don't wanna to go too little. So apply as needed. And that looks like just about enough. We'll work that in. And don't worry if you put too much on, you can take and transfer it over to another hide or just blot it dry with a paper towel. We're just gonna kind of drag it to the ends and get it in all the nooks and crannies first. Use your finger kind of like a little squeegee. And remember, be patient. If you got holes, go around your hole. Don't drag it through it, because that's just gonna transfer oil to the fur side. Work everything from the center to the edge.
once you're sure you have it everywhere, then go with a non-oiled finger and just kind of start to work that in, spinning little circles, getting it to the edges. And on this one, we're gonna go edges first and then work back to the center. Remember, they're little squirrels, so you don't need a whole bunch of oil on there. And you're just gonna work that until that oil starts to get kind of tacky. See how it's kind of getting a little tacky? It's wanting to stick to my finger, and it's not sliding there as good. It means it's doing its job, it's starting to absorb. And then we're just gonna lay these little guys out overnight, and we'll come and check them in the morning. Then when we're done checking those in the morning, we'll open them and go ahead and hang them. All right, we're back. It's been about uh, 24 hours. Uh, let these let these little guys dry up. After about four hours or so, I kind of worked them and stretched them just to kind of make sure that they didn't get all crispy. So, as you can see, it came out really, really pearly and just beautifully white. Same thing for this little guy here, and they're really soft and stretchy and pliable. They've got a nice tan feel. Now at this point, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and use your silk powder, but the silk powder, uh, I would recommend is just an optional. This is kind of what you're looking for. Now on a skunk or a raccoon or a beaver, a possum, I would recommend using it. But for these little skin, thin skin little guys I, I wouldn't bother with it unless it's obviously what you wanted so what we're gonna do now is that we're they're done drying we're gonna give them a quick brush because their hair is kind of matty and uh, just kind of get them to lay nice and flat then we're gonna go back through and give them a nice fluff so that way they look a little better so to do that you need to get your handy little brush and just kind of put a little bit of pressure and break up those little hair clumps. Work along the edges. Go with the grain of the fur. It's kind of important, with the grain. And if you see any little stuffs that could be in there, you can go ahead and use a little wire brush. Don't put a lot of pressure on it, just kind of rake it through. Don't forget the head. A lot of people forget the head. This process doesn't take very long. All you're doing is just aligning the fur and also don't forget your tail. Tail's kind of important. Another good way to do it is to go ahead and put the tail in your hand and just kind of make it J. Get all those little furs to straighten up and line up. I'd say that one's pretty much done. And then we're gonna go ahead and work on this one real fast. Same thing. Just brush them down, going with the grain. Follow the grain out on the edges. Always go from the edges to the inside. And then work your way down to the tail. So now what we're gonna do is go and try to give these guys a little bit of a fluff. So how we do that is lay them down, go ahead and get some water, and you wanna spritz the fur to where it's damp, but not soaking and dripping wet. This is just water. Remember, we're not trying to rehydrate it. We're just trying to 
get the hair wet. Just down, down to the bottom of the uh, little follicles. And then make sure we get his little tail here. Now the tail might rehydrate a little bit, that's fine. It's nothing to worry about. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down real quick with a quick brush and then we're gonna back brush it. And then we'll go ahead and get the hair dryer out. So all we're doing is kind of forcing and squ squishing and squeegeeing that water down and away from the hide. We just want enough to get them fluffed. You know when you have the right amount of water, when you start seeing little grooves and lines that are left behind with your brush. This area is not doing that, we need some more water. And well, we're gonna let that one sit for a minute, we're gonna do the same thing to this one. This process doesn't take too terribly long, and all it is is, like I said, just fluffing. All right, now just get a regular old hair dryer and set it on a cool, slightly warm setting. And we're gonna want kind of a lot of uh, pressure and a lot of speed of the air, because that's gonna help dry and fluff. So to do this, we're gonna go backwards against the hair. We're not going with the grain this time. Somebody should call these flying squirrels. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow dry and back brush. All we did was just kinda got rid of a little bit of the uh, excess moisture. So now it's the fluffing process. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on that little tail. Fluffing that tail. It's mostly dry now, which is kind of what we wanted. And all this is is just a real quick, <clears throat> real quick little back brush. Get it set up. So that took about 10 or 15 minutes uh, to go ahead and do. And remember, I'm always telling you to be patient. This is one of those things that's you kind of have to be patient. You don't want to put a lot of pressure or try to pull and yank out the hair, or try to back brush it too hard. You're just back brushing just enough to pick up those fibers of the fur. And then you can just kind of come through and continue doing whatever you're doing, little straightening up little edges. And since he's fluffed, then we're just gonna take and real lightly over the top, just go ahead and knock some of those hairs back down. Little fur fluffs. And then there you go, nice fluffy little squirrel. And so I still have another one to do. I'll be back here in just a few minutes once I'm done with that one. 
if you can take a look here, we've got it nice and soft and fluffy. The furs are standing up. And uh, one of the reasons why we do this in the taxidermy industry is because it makes your creatures look bigger. Um, and you just get a better quality. Instead of having everything all flat and slicked down, you actually get to have some depth to them. Uh, this is going to be like a similar process to a lot of our uh, fur bearers, you know, your raccoons, possums, beavers, weasels, bobcats, raccoons, foxes, and you know, other other little fur bearers. Each fluffing process is going to be a little different, but essentially it's the same. Uh, just with the longer fluffs, you uh, want to do deeper and harder uh, strokes. So thanks for watching the multi-step Tanifer dressing kit. Don't forget to tan that like button, subscribe, and leave your comments below. Thanks.